Hello friends, wishing you all a wonderful new year and welcome back to another video. Today we will be discussing Teladoc Health, ticker symbol TDOC. Teladoc was one of the hottest stocks in 2020 and 2021, going all the way from the 90s to over $300 and now has come all the way back to the $90 range again and is now trading at $91.70 at the time of recording this video. Let's discuss what this company does, why the stock price surged and why it dropped back, how their financials look, and then try to estimate their future revenues and profits to see if it is worth investing at the current levels or not. Before we go further, I would appreciate it if you could hit the like button and subscribe to my channel as that will motivate me to make more such videos analyzing different investment opportunities. Teradoc Health is a company that facilitates virtual healthcare by developing and offering the technology required for healthcare providers and patients to connect virtually instead of having to meet in person. So you may have figured why the stock price soared up in 2020 as their services became almost a necessity during the lockdowns and now with the situation easing up, the stock price came under pressure in the last few months after peaking at over $300 in early 2021. Now coming back to their business model, they offer services to four customer groups. Employers who want to provide health benefits to their employees, where Teladoc's customers include over half of the Fortune 500 companies in the world. Global insurers, which include over 100 US health plan providers, hospitals and health systems, and individuals who can also directly sign up with Teladoc to access virtual healthcare programs. Teladoc also did several acquisitions in the recent years, which has helped the company capture more market share and bring in higher revenues. Their biggest acquisition to date is that of Livongo Health in late 2020 at a purchase price of 18.5 billion US dollars. This deal raised the enterprise value of the combined company to 37 billion dollars back then, and it is very interesting to note that currently Teladoc is only trading with a market capitalization of 14.6 billion US dollars after the stock price crashed back into the $90 range. Either Teladoc is severely undervalued now or they paid an exorbitant price to purchase Livongo. In terms of their business model, Teladoc is aiming to create a new category of whole person care by integrating virtual medical care, chronic care, and mental health care into a single technology platform whereby the users can access services across all these subcategories virtually from the comfort of their homes. The company also currently has 92 million members with access to their products and believe they have ample opportunities to grow this user base with a total estimated 298 million insured lives in the United States alone. And Teladoc believes the market opportunity for their services is huge at 261 billion US dollars compared to the 2 billion US dollars in revenue they are currently bringing in. So arguably, if they manage to be a market leader in the space, they could expect to grow their revenues quite sizably in the future. Now let's look at Teladoc's financials. As you can see here, their revenues have been growing at a compounded annual growth rate of 69% and they estimate to close 2021 at around 2.4 billion US dollars. The company is also growing their margins with the 2021 adjusted EBITDA estimated to be $263 million. Adjusting out the 20 million temporary accounting benefit from the Livongo merger, they would still end up with $243 million, US dollars, which is certainly not bad for a company still growing revenues at a such high rate. In terms of future outlook, the company expects to continue growing revenues at 25 or 30% annually over the next three years and generate over $4 billion in 2024. The company also expects to grow their adjusted EBITDA by 1 to 1.5% over the next three years. So we can assume that in 2024, this would be around 13 to 14% of their revenues. They also have a reasonably good balance sheet with $826 million in cash and a net debt of $725 million as of September 2021. Let's now look at some fundamental metrics and ownership information before we dive into valuations. So as you can see here, there's a lot of interest among institutional investors for the stock and they collectively own over 80% of the shares. The company insiders on the other hand just hold over 5% of ownerships and I would ideally like this number to be a bit higher 
especially as the stock is currently trading very close to its 52 week lows. As for analyst ratings, you can see here that 28 analysts cover the stock and the average price target is at $158, which is around 70% higher than the current market price. In terms of key ratios, the price to book value of 0.95 is the lowest it has been in the last five years. However, we should be careful when evaluating the book value as the largest asset on Teladoc's balance sheet is the $14 billion goodwill, which is probably reflecting a significant portion of the price it paid to acquire Livongo. Since goodwill is an intangible asset, only time will tell if the additional revenues and margins from the Livongo brand is worth the price Teladoc paid to acquire Livongo. The price to sales ratio of 8.17 is also much lower than the 12.44 the stock traded on average over the last five years. This likely reflects the current negative market sentiment for Teladoc and growth stocks in general. And if this sentiment changes or if the company beats earnings estimate in the upcoming quarters, we could see a quick expansion in Teladoc's valuation as the market will likely assign a higher price to sales multiple. The price to cash flow is at negative 55, which is obviously not good. Even though this is common with companies in its growth stage, it would be good if the company focuses on improving their cash flow margins in the near future by striking a balance between growth and profitability. The company is also well funded from a working capital perspective as their current ratio stands at 3.83, which is pretty good. Let's now discuss valuation using some scenarios to estimate the future revenues and profits and see if it is worth investing in Teladoc at the current stock price. So as you can see, I have drafted three scenarios here with different revenue projections and to be conservative, I have assumed the best case to be the company growing revenues at 25% over the next five years based on the three-year guidance the company has provided. So as you can see here, we'll make a decent profit of nearly 12% annualized if scenario three plays out, whereas we'll lose money if scenario one plays out. Personally, even though I like the company's business model and future prospects, I think it is safe to go with scenario two to be a bit conservative. So I'm not too excited to buy the current stock price and I'm hoping the price would dip into the low 80s or high 70s, which I think would be a great buying point. Having said that, I don't want to lose the opportunity to make some gains while waiting for the stock price to drop. So I went ahead and sold the $70 put option expiring in March 2022 for $2.20. As you can see here, this would give me an annualized return of around 15% if the stock stays above $70 at the time the option expires. Or if the price drops below 70, I'll be happy to close the put and buy the stock for $70 as a long-term hold. Let me know your thoughts on Teladoc and if you're planning to make an investment at these levels. And I hope you liked this video, so please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And as a friendly reminder, I'm not a licensed investment advisor, so always remember to do your due diligence before making any investment decisions. That's it for now. You have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.